This is the Chase Sapphire, a near all-time high sign-up bonus, and you need to jump on it before it's whoosh, gone. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For our new viewers out there, my name is John of John's Finance Tips. I'm the guy who's had over 50 of these in millions more of miles and points, largely so that you don't have to, but more importantly, so that I can teach you how to either travel for free or save a ton of money on your next shopping trip. In today's video, we're talking about a fan favorite and one of my top mid-tier travel cards, the Chase Sapphire Preferred. You know, I was actually gonna hold off on making this video because it had an elevated sign-up bonus, but I just also heard that this bonus might be gone soon. And so obviously I had to make the video very quickly to spread the word. And boy, am I glad I jumped on this video because I literally shot a day ago. I'm reviewing the edit right now and we just got word the bonus will be gone end of day, May 24th. The video is going to break down into two sections. The first section, I'm going to go over all the rules associated to getting chase cards. Because they're so popular and there's such strong demand, there are some rules we want to be cognizant of. The second section is going to be the card overview, where I talk about the sign-up bonus, the earnings, the benefits, the annual fee, and of course, my verdict. However, I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. If you cannot sit through the entire video, no worries. The TLDR is, if you have not had a chase sapphire bonus in the past 48 months, get this bonus. That's it. And for everyone else though, pop a squad, tap the thumb icon. If you feel like supporting my channel, feel free to use my referral or affiliate link that's gonna be down below and we'll dive right in. Section one, chase application rules. There's gonna be three we're going to go over. The first one is gonna be the Sapphire rule, which is the one in 48, which basically says if you have had a bonus from a Sapphire product, either the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, in the last 48 months, you are ineligible to get the bonus again. However, let's say the last time you got the bonus was 50 months ago, then you can apply again to get the bonus again. For those of you who currently have a Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserve, what you should do is downgrade that card product into a Chase Freedom so that you can then apply again for the Sapphire bonus. Rule number two, and this is one of Chase's most infamous rules, and this is 524, where it basically says if you have been approved for five credit cards, regardless of bank, in the past 24 months, Chase will automatically deny you for another card. Now, in this particular instance, there have been some reports online of people being over 524 and getting approved for the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I think that's more of a one-off. Chase has been pretty steadfast on this rule since it debuted back in 2016 or 17. So be cognizant of that. Business cards do not count in 524. And the third Chase rule to be cognizant of is 230. What that says is you can only get approved for two credit cards from Chase Max in a 30 day period. So if in day one, you apply for a Chase Freedom, then day two, you got a Chase Inc product, then in day three, you can't apply for anymore. In fact, you've got to wait 30 days to get another Chase card. So be cognizant of that if you're getting a bunch of credit cards. And now let's dive into an overview of the card. So the first thing to talk about is the sign-up bonus. This comes in at 80,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points after you spend $4,000 in the first three months. Historically, this is a near all-time high. The highest ever we saw for Sapphire Preferred was 100,000. I personally don't think we'll see that ever again. And so this is definitely the next best. I would 100% jump on this as long as I qualify with respect to those rules that we discussed earlier. As for value of the points, on a low end, these 80,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points, maybe $800 or so. On the high end, it could be thousands. And later on in the video, I'll show you exactly how I get thousands of dollars of value from these 80,000 points. Next section, earnings. This card will earn five points for every single dollar spent if you book travel through the Chase Ultimate Reward Portal. You will earn three points per dollar spent on dining, including some delivery services. You will also earn three points per dollar spent for online grocery, but that excludes Target, Walmart, and wholesale clubs. I think that's an interesting one, online grocery versus like going to a supermarket, but it is what it is. You'll also earn three points per dollar spent on select streaming services. Now I had to go into terms and conditions to see exactly what they are, and I'll list them on the screen here, but they include the major ones like Netflix, HBO, as well as Disney Plus. You will earn two points for every single dollar spent on all travel and one point per dollar spent everywhere else. Take a look at the earnings. This is solid. You get the food with the dining. You get some of the travel with either the 2X travel or 5X if you book through Chase Ultimate Award travel. It would have been nice that the online grocery was also all grocery, but at least it's better than earning just 1X. Next section is benefits. And here is really where the Chase Sapphire Preferred starts to shine. So the first major benefit I wanna call out is the fact that you get a 25% bonus if you take your points and redeem them through the Chase Ultimate Reward Portal. So I have about 1.6 million Chase points or so. And if I use the Chase Sapphire Preferred's travel portal, 
that would equate to roughly $20,000 worth of travel, which is insane. The other thing you wanna think about, especially folks who are looking at a Chase Sapphire Preferred as it's a mid-tier travel card, is the fact that you probably have a Chase Freedom, Freedom Unlimited, Freedom Flex. Well, if you take the points from your Chase Freedom and you move them to your Sapphire Preferred, you'll get the 25% bonus. So here's where we wanna start really strategically thinking about what type of credit card portfolio we're starting to build. And Chase has some amazing synergies from their entry level to their mid-tier to their top tier to their business business cards as well. And on the travel vein, this is where I think you're going to get the most bang for your buck from your Chase Ultimate Reward Points, and that is moving them from Chase to a travel partner. So I'm gonna go over four examples, three airline and one hotel, to really show you the power of these points when they're not just strictly used for cash back or strictly redeemed through the travel portal. The first example we're gonna take a look at is getting over to Paris. So what's better than flying to Paris? Well, flying to Paris in business class, specifically on Air France. So taking a look, we can take our Chase Ultimate Reward Points and transfer them to Air France or more specifically, the Flying Blue program to book a flight on Air France. So taking a look here, a flight from Boston to Paris on April 17th of next year would cost me about 70,000 Flying Blue miles and $207 for the taxes and associated fees. If instead we wanted to buy and pay cash, that flight would have cost over $2,800. And as a very quick refresher for you to value points, we use a formula known as the cent per point formula, where we take the cash value of the redemption minus any tax and fees, divide all of that by the points total and multiply by 100. A one cent per point value is baseline. It's not good, it's not great, it's just average. If you're under it, you could do better. If you're over it, you're killing it. So taking a look at this redemption with Air France, we would take the $2,832 minus the $207 of tax and fees, divide all of that by 70,000 and you multiply by 100 and you will get a cent per point of 3.75, almost four times more than a baseline value. That is absolutely incredible. And that's the power of transfer partners. But wait, it gets better. Let's say maybe Europe isn't quite your cup of tea. How about Asia instead? Maybe Tokyo? Why, why don't we fly there in style in business class? Taking a look at the second option I've lined out here, we can take our Chase Ultimate Reward Points and transfer them to Air Canada. And then we can take a look at Air Canada's award chart. We can then use the Air Canada miles to book a flight aboard all Nippon Airways. The reason you can do that is because Air Canada and ANA are in the Star Alliance network. So this redemption in business class would cost you 75,000 Air Canada miles and 75 Canadian dollars. If instead you just wanted to pay cash money, that flight would cost you $6,400. Woo! So let's take this and plug it into our cent per point formula to figure out how much it would be worth. So we take the cash value, which is 6,467, minus out the tax and fees, which is equivalent to about 55 US dollars, divide all of that by 75,000, multiply by 100, and you get a CPP of 8.55. Folks, you're getting eight and a half times the baseline value of those points. That's absolutely insane. Although I do love Tokyo, I also do love getting into the tropics. How about a trip to the Maldives? Let's fly again in business, but maybe this time instead of flying in our single beds, we could fly in a double bed that lies flat in the sky with you and your partner. Well, we could try to fly aboard Qatar Airways. So we can take our Chase Ultimate Reward Points and transfer them to British Airways. Now, British Airways and Qatar are in the same alliance known as One World. And so we can take British Airways Avios and book for a Qatar flight. That flight would go from Boston over to the Maldives, and that would cost you 85,000 British Airways Avios and about $207 in taxes and fees. If instead we use like pay cash money, we would be spending close to $7,500. So let's go ahead and take this and plug this into our CPP formula, 7,486 minus the $207 in tax and fees divided by 85,000, multiply by 100, and you get a similar CPP of about 8.5. Six. Even though this seems incredible, I would actually say this isn't the best way to fly Qatar Airways, just because I usually like to fly them into the Maldives or honestly, if I can transfer through Doha anywhere, that's my preference. And I use American Airlines miles and I know that that flight on American Airlines miles would only be 70,000 American Airlines miles. That's a nuanced level three topic in the points and miles game we're not going to get into here. But my point is, even though these are some of the great ways to use chase points for specific redemption. There might be even better programs. We're not going to get any gritty, but hopefully this highlights for you the value of your chase ultimate world points when you transfer them to some of their flight partners. But I'm not done yet because personally, I see chase points as very valuable, specifically for hotels, specifically for Hyatt. 
The reason being, I think Hyatt is one of the last standing hotel programs where you actually get outsized value for your points. Honestly, I take a look at Marriott, I take a look at Hilton. It feels as if they tried to make sure you get under one CPP in value, regardless of redemption. Whether it or not that's the case, they purposely do it, I don't know, but that's what I always come out to. I'm always at like 0.7 or 0.8 CPP for those other hotels. Whereas for Hyatt, you can very easily hit the baseline, if not over. So let's take a look at one of the best value redemptions in the Hyatt chain, which is looking at one of their all-inclusive resorts. Now they have a whole ton. They've got the Hyatt Zaleras and Zivas, but let's take a look at the Secrets Moshe because I was blown away at this all-inclusive resort when I stayed earlier this month. It's in Playa del Carmen and it comes with all the food, all the drink that you can consume for free because it's all included in your rate. And if you use your points, it's in entirely free. So Secrets Moshe per night looks like it's about 35,000 points a night. You get the sign-up bonus from the Chase Sapphire Preferred, that's two nights. Instead, you could pay $770. Yikes. So plug that into a formula, 770 divided by 35,000, multiply by 100, and you get a CPP of 2.2. Yes, relative to the airlines, it's not as high. However, you need to understand for hotels, this is incredible value. Next week, I'm traveling to Hawaii. I'm staying at Marriott. I struggle to get 0.8 cents per point value out of my Marriott redemption. I honestly think they keep them suppressed. So getting 2.2 times the value of baseline on a hotel redemption, I'm jumping for joy. And primarily when I think about how I wanna use my Chase Ultimate World Points, it is on hotel bookings. Because of the fact that if I think about British Airways, you can get an Amex point. If I think about Air Canada, all the partners transfer to them. And for me, when I think about my chase points, they primarily are hotel points because no one else transfers to Hyatt. Well, technically the built MasterCard does, but no other major bank does. Whereas for Flying Blue, American Express, I know transfer them. Whereas for Air Canada, all the other banks transfer them. And as well as for British Airways, the other banks transfer them. So there aren't a whole ton of airlines that are exclusive to Chase, Southwest and United are, but actually even United isn't anymore because Built can transfer them. Regardless, that's how I think about my chase points. Hopefully that helps you in terms of how you want to bucket and think about the value and how you want to redeem. Now let's move on to some of the other benefits of the card. If you book car rental with the card, it will come with primary car rental insurance. So you can go ahead and decline whatever it is they try to upsell you when you pick up your car. This card also offers baggage delay insurance. So if your bags are delayed six hours, you can get reimbursed up to $100 a day for five days for essentials that were in your baggage. The card will also earn 5X on Lyft until March 31st of 2025. The card also offers Dash Bash complimentary until the end of 2024. You will also receive a $10 GoPuff credit until the end of 2023. And lastly, it comes wrapped with a $50 hotel credit. So if you use the card to book hotels, you get a $50 credit. So taking a look, I say the best value is obviously going to be the transfers out to any of the flight partners, but I also like some of the credits offered. This card does have an annual fee. It's $95 a year and it's not waived in the first year. But remember, you do get a $50 hotel credit every year as long as you book hotels using the card. And so effectively, I would say this is a $45 a year card. In my opinion, is it worth it? For most folks, if you're kind of in the mid tier category, I like this card. Definitely for the sign-up bonus, definitely for the value of chase points to high it, but at 45 bucks, if you're using it for some of the travel, you're using it for the dining, it certainly pencils out for folks, especially if you can pool this with a freedom and you get the 25% bonus for your redemption. But I highly recommend, as long as you meet the parameters of qualifying for this card, jump on the sign-up bonus for 80,000 points after $4,000 of spent in the first three months. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And if you'd like to support my channel in any way, feel free to use my affiliate links in the description box below as well. And I will catch you all next time. Peace.